Have you ever wondered what type of exercise is best for your specific situation and goals? Well, I'm going to tell you which exercise is going to be most helpful for you depending on your diet and your goals. So for example, whether you're trying to lose weight or maintain your weight or gain weight or body recomposition overall, and for diet, whether you're on a standard Western diet or a balanced macro diet, high carb, low fat diet, whole foods, plant-based diet, or a keto diet. And if somehow that big list still doesn't cover your specific situation, I will also be giving you some general advice to figure out what type of exercise is going to be best for your goals. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I'm a PhD candidate using scientific studies to help you reach your weight loss, nutrition, and health goals, both mentally and physically. And I especially like to share information that most media and influencers either don't know about or are just wrong about, because most people don't go straight to the scientific studies, but I love to. In the last video in this series, I went over studies that looked at how much fat you burn and how much weight you lost from walking versus running and cycling. And then I also shared the optimal speed and effort to walk at to burn the most fat according to studies. So if you missed that, be sure to check it out. I'll be putting it up here. And for this video, I'm going to start with an example to explain why different types of exercises might be better for different types of diets and goals. And when I say type of exercise, I'm referring to high intensity versus low intensity in general. And when I say running, I mean high intensity, and when I say walking, I mean low intensity. But you could substitute in any exercise that you like that's high or low intensity. For example, maybe really easy biking versus harder biking like sprints, or maybe even jumping jacks or swimming or whatever kind of cardio that you like to do. And to do that, I'm going to answer a question that I got from one of you on Instagram. Shout out to those of you who follow me there and help me make these videos by asking questions and responding to my story polls. I really appreciate it. And the specific question was, how far do you have to walk to burn the same number of calories as running a 5K, for example? In addition to answering the question of calories, I'm going to do you one better and also tell you how much fat you burn from walking versus running. And this is a different way of looking at it than the last video, so even if it sounds like it's the same thing, it's not going to be, I promise. And in a few minutes, you're going to see why paying attention to the calories versus fat burned is going to be important for deciding which exercise is going to be best for your situation. And to answer this question, I used validated equations that I took straight from published scientific studies, so these are not your average online calculator results. And I use these equations to calculate the amount of calories and fat that I would burn, just to use myself as an example, from walking and running. And for your reference, I am 5 foot 6 inches and 115 pounds. And even though I used my own stats as the inputs for the equations, the general takeaway of the differences between walking and running is generalizable to you. So this will apply to you, the specific numbers of calories and fat burned apply to me. So the first thing I did was I calculated how many calories I would burn from walking a 5k. And I'm assuming a walking speed of about 3 miles per hour, because that's pretty standard walking speed, what I usually go at. And it would take me about an hour to walk this 5k. In that hour of walking that 5k, I would burn a little over 200 calories. And if I were to run, I would probably be running at around 6 miles per hour. And so it would take me about 30 minutes to run a 5k. And in that 30 minutes of running, I would burn 300 calories according to these equations. So with walking, we walk for an hour and burn 200 calories, whereas with running, we can run for 30 minutes and burn 300 calories. And to put it differently, you would have to walk for an hour and a half to burn the same number of calories as you would from running 30 minutes. So therefore walking takes longer to do this 5k obviously, and it also burns fewer calories. So it's sounding pretty bad for walking or low intensity exercise, right? Because we know that weight loss and weight gain and all that is just about calories in versus calories out, this should tell us that running is always gonna be better for weight loss, right? Well, let's look at how much fat you actually burn from each type of exercise. The whole calories in versus calories out law actually does not work a lot of the time because we don't know exactly how many calories we are absorbing from food. In fact, our estimates are pretty terrible, and we also don't know how many calories exactly we're burning from exercising. And the interaction of different macronutrients with different metabolic processes 
are gonna determine how much weight you lose or gain. And it's not just about calories. In fact, a lot of the time, it's not about calories at all, really. And for my next calculation, I looked at fat oxidation rates from scientific studies at different levels of exercise intensity, specifically for walking and running. So this does generalize to other types of exercises, but for these specific percentages, they're coming from walking and running. For walking, I would be burning about 30% of my calories from fat. So when I'm walking along, about 70% would come from carbs, and 30% of my calories burned would come from fat. And therefore, on my walking 5K in that hour, I would burn about 70 calories from fat. A little under. And that would be equal to about 2% of a pound of fat. And as you may remember from my last video, you burn more fat as a percent of your calories burned when you are exercising at a lower intensity than a higher intensity. So I bet you can guess how your fat burning is going to look for running compared to walking. So when I'm doing this run, it's taking a lot of effort and it's higher intensity, obviously. And as a result, I'm going to burn a higher percent of my calories from carbs. And specifically, I will burn about 90% carbs and 10% fat. And so when I'm running that 5K, I actually only end up burning about 30 calories from fat. And as a reminder, from walking the 5K, I would have burned about 70 calories from fat. So you can see even though walking takes twice as long as running in this example, it actually burns about double the fat. And what this means in terms of a real world takeaway for you is that walking burns about the same amount of fat as running minute per minute. So walking 30 minutes burned about as much fat as running for 30 minutes. Walking half of a 5K burns as much fat as running an entire 5K. You may be asking, well, what matters more here? Is it the amount of calories I burn or the amount of fat I burn? Well, it depends on your specific diet and goals. And that's why I'm gonna spend the next few minutes outlining a bunch of different combos of diet and weight loss goals to try to figure out which type of exercise, low intensity or high intensity, is gonna be best for you. And before I continue, I want to remind you of a function I kind of forgot about because I'm feeling old when it comes to YouTube, but if you want to stay on top of my videos and see when they come out, please hit the notification bell below. I'm going to focus on three major factors that are gonna determine which type of exercise is gonna be best for you. And that's, as I've said, diet and goals. And also your current rate of weight loss or weight gain or maintenance. And I'll get into more about why that matters in a moment. And stick around because as I said, I'm gonna be covering high carb, low fat and more standard diets, just like moderate amounts of fat, protein, and carbs, as well as whole foods, plant-based diets and keto diets. And I also wanna add a disclaimer that this is based on my own thoughts that are drawn from scientific studies, like extrapolations based on reading a bunch of them. But I just want to make sure that you know that there aren't really studies that look directly at a specific combination of diet and exercise and like optimizing for each diet. Now let's start with my old faithful diet that I used to do and loved, and that is a high carb, low fat diet, because it's the easiest case to figure out which type of exercise is best. And in almost every case, I'm gonna say that low intensity exercise like walking is best if you're on a high carb, low fat diet. And now I'm gonna backtrack and tell you why. If you are on a low fat diet and you're not restricting your intake, which I really recommend you don't restrict your intake, then you're gonna have a lot of carbs just floating around in your body available like all the time because you're gonna be filling up on carbs. And what you won't have a lot of is fat. And so in this case, running or doing other high intensity exercise and burning a lot of calories from carbs isn't actually going to be that useful for you because there are always more carbs where that came from. And because it's so hard for your body to store carbs as fat, it's not really surplus carbs that you wanna get rid of here, it's actually fat that you wanna get rid of. And so to directly bypass all those extra carbs you have and instead burn your body fat, I would suggest doing a low intensity exercise like walking that's really gonna directly burn fat. And personally, I think that a high carb, low fat diet plus low intensity exercise like walking is one of the best ways to lose weight. It's easy, it's delicious, it's good for you. I think it's just a really great transition from having a classic restriction type diet and trying to escape that and be able to lose weight easily without having to restrict your intake. And one case I'm also gonna be talking about with each of these diets is if you find yourself gaining weight when you don't want to be, then in this case with a high carb diet, I would suggest walking for the same reason. It's really hard for your body to store carbs as fat 
And therefore you really wanna get rid of any extra fat you have around, like in your blood. And with a high carb diet, if you are trying to maintain your weight, then I think that running is gonna be better if you're interested in fitness and walking is gonna be better if you find it difficult to maintain your weight. So if you find yourself like sometimes gradually going up, kind of like the case before, then I think walking would be better. And for the last situation of a high carb, low fat diet, if you are restricting your intake, which I really don't suggest, but I wanna help you too in your goals in case you have a lot of weight to lose, um, then I think that it's gonna be kind of a wash between walking and running because either you're gonna run and burn a lot more calories, which because you're already at a deficit, those burned calories are gonna have to come from your body fat stores over time. And with walking, it'll tap directly into your body fat stores. So either way, I think will be effective. But lots of studies have shown that you do not need to restrict to lose weight, especially on a high carb, low fat diet. I have lots of videos on that. So please check those out. Restricting is not fun or necessary or good for you. Okay, sorry, that's my little rant. And the next situations I go through are gonna be shorter. I just made the first one a little longer so you can see how I'm getting to these conclusions. And now what if you're on a normal diet where your macros are you know, pretty moderate, pretty standard. This could include a Western diet, just a general, more standard healthful diet that isn't low in fat or anything, or if it fits your macros, anything like that would fall under this category. First, if you are eating pretty standard diet, and you're either already losing weight really quickly or you are calorie counting and restricting so that you know you'll be at a really big deficit, like over 400 calories a day, let's say. Then in this case, I think running will be better because if you are already in a deficit, then you are already gonna have to burn your body fat stores just by existing. So anything that reduces your calories even more is gonna increase the amount of body fat stores you have to burn. So if you are losing weight really quickly, especially on a normal macro diet, or you plan to lose weight really quickly, then high intensity exercise is probably gonna be your best bet. But let me just remind you that losing weight slowly is much better for you for a lot of reasons. It's better for your body composition. You're gonna look a lot better at the end of it. It's gonna be better for your mental health. Now, if you are near maintenance or are losing nice and gradually, like let's say three or less pounds a month, depending on your starting weight, of course. Like in my case, that would probably be like one pound a month, but if you were Starting from a higher weight might be a little higher. In this case, I would recommend a low intensity exercise like walking. And this is for the same reasons as a high carb diet because in this case, you wanna target the fat that's floating around so that it's harder for your body to store it as fat. And so that you can burn fat when you are at a more fasted place in your day. And lastly, if you find yourself gaining and don't want to be on a more standard macro diet, then I recommend running because you're just gonna wanna reduce your calories in this case because reducing a little bit of fat probably won't help that much because there's always more where that came from, you know? And for the next diet, I'm gonna talk about my current favorite, which is whole food plant-based. And so with a whole foods plant-based diet or any other diet that is very high in unprocessed foods and very low in processed foods, calories in versus calories out pretty much completely goes out the window. Like it does not work anymore. And there's studies supporting this. Check out my video on this if you're interested. Spoiler alert, people lost weight when eating at a surplus, so yeah. So in this case, if you are eating a whole foods plant-based diet that is not very low fat, then what you're gonna need to do is actually monitor your rate of weight loss and use that to decide which exercise is gonna help you the most to speed it up. It sounds counterintuitive, but bear with me. If you are losing weight really quickly, like let's say a pound a week or more, then your body is definitely in a deficit most of the time because it is burning a lot of fat all the time pretty much. And in this case, I think that a high intensity exercise like running is gonna be most helpful because just like with the normal diet case or the restricted diet case, it's gonna bring your calories even lower because you already know you're in a deficit most of the time. Bringing them even lower is just gonna stoke the fat burning fire. Now on the other hand, if you are losing more gradually or you are maintaining and want to stay at your weight and wanna make sure you don't like creep up, then I think walking is gonna be your best bet. And that's because you're burning off the fat that's available in your blood and you're less likely to store it on you at those times when you're not in a deficit. And if you find yourself gaining weight, which is really, really unlikely on a whole foods plant-based diet, uh, then kind of a wash, but maybe slightly favoring running. And now for the last diet category I'm gonna talk about, and then after this diet category, I'm gonna get into more body recomposition in general and whatnot. But first I wanna talk about ketosis or keto diets. And I have some advice for you that I think will be really helpful for you in your life. And that is 
don't do keto. Not unless you have epilepsy because that is pretty much the one thing that it has been shown by scientific studies to be useful for. Now if you're doing vegan keto on the other hand, that's probably less damaging. And in that case, I would follow the advice from either the moderate diet group or the whole foods plant-based diet group, depending on which one your diet is closer to. Now, if you really want to gain muscle and that's your big goal, then I would recommend doing more like sprint type exercises or high intensity interval training. And then in a similar vein, if you're trying to work on your fitness and body recomposition, in addition to HIIT or high intensity interval training, I would also recommend actually doing a mix of high and low intensity exercises. And they complement each other really nicely because high intensity exercise is really great for your brain and your cardiovascular system and your health in general. And it's just gonna help with your body recomposition efforts. And walking will too, because it'll help both recover from delayed onset muscle soreness that you get from your other workouts, and it'll be helpful for burning off some extra fat while you're at it. So that's what I do actually. I do a combination of running, walking, and lifting weights when my joints allow me to, and I find it's really, really effective when I am able to actually do it. If you are trying to gain weight, then I think your best bet is just gonna be to lift weights, honestly. There isn't really a great type of cardio for weight gain, but if you wanna keep your fitness up, then I would suggest high intensity or high intensity intervals. And I also want to add as a little extra consideration is that exercise actually suppresses your appetite. At least studies have shown that it can be really helpful for appetite suppression. And you may find that different exercise intensities actually work better or worse for you for appetite suppression. So you could try experimenting and figure out which one seems to change your hunger levels the most. But if you are interested in a video on exercise and appetite suppression specifically, please comment below. Love to know what you wanna see. And so to give you more general advice to apply to your situation, low intensity exercise is generally gonna be better if you are currently at or near your goal weight, so around maintenance, and or if you are losing weight gradually, or, and or again, if you are on a high carb, low fat diet. In these cases I've just outlined, the whole calories in versus calories out mantra does not apply nearly as well. In fact, it breaks a whole lot of the time in these three situations. And so in this case, getting that extra fat burning boost from walking is gonna be really helpful for you. On the other hand, high intensity exercise would be better for you if you are losing weight really quickly and wanna speed it up, or if you're eating a more moderate fat diet. And in this case, just burning off more energy is probably gonna be the most helpful for you, minute for minute. Just to add, if your time is unlimited and you can get like a walking desk at work, for example, then you might actually be best served by just walking for a really long time so you burn the most calories and the most fat. But I don't know, I wouldn't wanna walk all day long. But if your joints can take it and you like it, then that might actually be a good solution for you. And if you find yourself much more interested in HIIT or high intensity interval training and you're not so interested in this steady state cardio I've been talking about and you wanna see videos on it, please comment below and let me know. There's just more research on steady state cardio so I can speak more confidently about which types of steady state cardio, specifically high or low intensity, is gonna be better for your specific goals. And I know I've said this before, but I will say it again, the best exercise is the one that you enjoy doing and that you can do sustainably. And there are lots of benefits to both running and walking, or both high and low intensity exercise in general. It's great for your brain, which I care about the brain because that's mostly what I study, and it's great for your body and your mental health, and yes. Any type of exercise you enjoy, you should do it. And now I really wanna hear your thoughts. First, I'm curious if you generally prefer high or low intensity exercise. And then I'm also curious if you think that you will be changing up your exercise routine at all as a result of this video. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Love to talk to you. And if you wanna help me keep making these videos, please like and share. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to hit the notification bell below, that will tell you when I have a new video out so that you can catch it and learn something new. And if you're feeling especially generous, please head on over to my Patreon. Even just a dollar or two a month makes a big difference to me and it means a lot to me to know that you guys like my videos and content and everything. So you guys are awesome. Thank you for being the reason I do this and have a great day.